Right, welcome to my uh, little presentation on how to fix your makeup bot. Uh, it depends on the problem, but I mean the particular problem I'm looking at is the nesting problem. Uh, this is my first makeup bot rep two. Uh, that, as you can see, has just done 336 hours of building. Uh, it failed about 90 hours in. Uh, with uh, this problem. This is my second MakerBot 2 uh, and this one has uh, failed at 18 hours. Now we'll ask it if it'll do the problem so it builds from SD. One of the favourite ones for displaying this problem seems to be the stretchlet. So we'll see whether it'll make a stretchlet and it might display the problem straight away. There we go. So basically, all of a sudden, your head sets off in the wrong direction. Now when you're trying to build something, there we go, major problem. Uh, and believe it or not, uh, there was a, it, it's not the actual slides. Well, I've been around CNC a long number of years, and the first thing I thought was, it's the slides that are dry. And there it is a possibility, but the fact that it's to in and fro in tells you more than that. And basically, look at what around here, the problem is in that cable there. It's just bended too much. And what's happening is it it's literally causing the cores of that cable to uh, break up. And I uh, got my other machine up to 300 and odd hours, literally, by putting in a temporary fix. So we'll see if we can get you a shot of that. And there's my temporary fix. And all I did was literally cut out the offending piece of wire. Uh, because originally I didn't believe the fault exit. I thought this, the, well, the help I was getting from um, Robo Savvy wasn't sensible, well this just doesn't make sense uh, and so, not believe them, put this patch cable in and it's done 220 hours on that patch cable if you can do that and your makeup up suddenly goes into rumble mode that's where your problem is I just noticed this on this setting machine I couldn't miss getting you a shot of it. Look how tight that cable is there. That cable is so wrapped around there. It is unbelievable. No wonder this one's failed at 18 hours. Right. So, the way that this works is that there is a... Let's turn the power off. It's like a little so it's actually um what would you call it uh, a pin sprung pin that holds the wires in and then you can literally pull the wires straight out and then up the top there and I'm going to push the black one back in because the black one handles the um, What's the color? So the uh, homing switch, and doesn't seem to suffer as badly, or perhaps what it's doing isn't as critical. I don't know. We'll have to see uh, how it turns out. And then, basically, I'm trying to remember how that uh, connector's held on there. It feels like a cabbage clip, which. I should be able to get to with a pair of pliers. What I might have to do is lift the machine on its end and have a look. Don't pull the wires and then we don't pull them. Just this up. As long as you turn it 90 degrees this way, it seems to be alright. Don't lose its uh, wheel or anything. Yeah, it's just simply a cabby clip. I'll, I'll switch you off for a second. Right, so what I've done is I've just cut across that little cable tie that holds the 
the two wires in. Um, I must admit, I've seen this black wire now, I'm beginning to wonder whether I ought to do that at the same time. But if you pull that plug out there, it actually does say X on it for the X axis, and the actual damaged section is there. So, really, all that cable is fine. So, you don't need to cut it short. You know, leave yourself some room on there, and then if you do ever want to put it back, you've got yourself as much room as possible. Allow for the fact that this is a fairly tight um, movement, uh, and because of the, this pl piece of plastic here, it's actually held off centre. So, it's actually not just bending, but it's actually a twisting action as well. So you can understand why the cable hasn't lasted. It, it's fairly, tr you know, fairly, that's fairly close to the actual servo, so that's the bit that gets damaged. So all I've just done is straight, you know, cable for cable, uh, put an extra piece in just so that it hangs, and uh, what I'll we'll do is see how, see how well it runs. We'll do the uh, what they call it, the uh, bracelet. So we'll do a build from SD, and I'll take a shot from the front. Right, so let's do the old uh, build from SD. I'll go down and I'll select the stretchlet, which we'll sort of get an idea now that it is running. By now it would have already faltered if it was uh, still falter. <laughs> yeah. What I'll do is I'll, uh, rather than bore you with the whole stretch that build, we'll just record the finish bit. Right, so there we go, one finished stretch lit. Um, it uh, wouldn't make those earlier, it was just uh, moving constantly sideways. Uh, the, uh, I'll just mention it actually is on the gecko surface, and I'll just show you how easy it is to get it off the gecko. It literally it is held fairly well. But once you want it off, it comes off with a spatula. Right, so we're uh, back into full production. Well, we've got a little look into and it's keep. So, like I said, it might be a bit of a heat from in some repair. But it does solve the problem.